good evening, everybody. I pray everybody is doing well. Sorry, I had a couple of technical difficulties. Um, we trying to teach Angie um, more than what she thinks, huh? To go? Okay, we're going to get started. Um, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for another time of sharing. We ask that you would continue to lead us and guide us and direct us. And we ask it all, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Sister Angie, let's, we are still on the slides and the handout from last week. Um, well, last month that we never really finished. So, Sister Angie, um, do we have any questions of what we covered up to this point okay I kind of move quickly we're going to slow down this time next slide Sister Angie okay Sister Angie you put me on the um, alright no that, that, that ain't it either I'm glad no you, you're not on slides look what you're on look at, look at your screen look at your screen that's what's showing okay right there okay so six ways God addresses the people in the Bible. Let's go to Joshua chapter five. Um, and uh, matter of fact, uh, Sister Pam, why don't you um, look up Joshua chapter five? Um, brother, um, no, Sister Carl, if you can look up Luke 1, 26 through 38. Uh, brother Glenn, if you can look up Matthew 28. And so, Sister Singleton, if you can do the Acts 5, and then I'll come do the Acts 27. NIV is fine. NIV is fine. Okay? Six ways God addresses people in the Bible. A supernatural messenger or an angel. People encounter angels in a normal state of mind. Okay? Joshua chapter 5 verses 13 through 15. So we're going to look at Joshua. We're going to look at Mary. We're going to look at the women at the tomb. We're going to look at Peter. And we're going to look at Paul. Sister Pam, you got Joshua? Okay. Brother Jimmy, you're supposed to be grabbing the mic, remember? Okay. You can you can move. You can move fast when you want to. Yeah. You can move fast when you want to. I found that out. Okay. All right. Sister Angie, we straight back there? Okay. Sister Ina, we're getting ready to come up there and help you right now. Okay? Read. You know, I always want to say that, like the Pentecostal people. All right? Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or are you or for us? Or for our enemies. Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have come. Now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take your sandals off, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And Joshua did so. Okay, all right. Who has the Luke passage? You got to come on this side. All right. Take your time. Yeah, you can get that one, but we we on the old handout. Um, so we we we're walking on the screen. But um, Sister Jasmine, if you go to the app, um, there's a sermon note section. And all of the handouts are there. So from March the 20th. Okay. And you're doing a whole lot to come in the Bible study. You faithful. Baby, broke leg. You, you faithful. Go ahead, Sister Carla. Mary, 
Keep reading the 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then, then the angel left her. Okay. Brother Glenn. We're on Matthew, so if you open up your Bibles, we're in Matthew chapter 28, verses 2 through 7. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes, clothes were like white as snow. The guard were so afraid of him that they shook and came like the, and became like dead men. The angels said to the woman, "Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here; he has risen, just as he said." Come and see the place where he lie, where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is gone ahead of you unto Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Okay. Um, so, Sister Ina, if you can go to your phone, Acts 27, verses 23 through 26. Sister Singleton is going to do Acts 5. But if you can do Acts 7, 23 through 26. Huh? Uh, no, Acts 5, 19 through 20. That's what the slide said, and that's what we're on the handout. Okay. Okay, those who are watching online, um, we are, if you go to our sermon notes, um, we are on the note Bible study um, from March the 30th, Hearing from God, uh, March the 20th, I'm sorry, Hearing from God, that's where we are, um, I think, is that the one? March 20th, okay? And we're on the point, angels, uh, supernatural messenger, or an angel, people encounter. Okay? And Peter, Acts 5, 19 through 20. Okay. And thank you so much, Sister Singleton. Reading from her phone, Senior Saints, praise the Lord. That means everybody can do the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Even sent me a message. She was the only person who dropped in the sermon notes Sunday. Uh, Sister Carla, praise the Lord. Sister Ina is going to be the last one for the Acts 27, verses 23 through 26. You didn't know you was going to have to work this hard, huh, Sister Pam? Tell, matter of fact, tell Jimmy to slide on in. Uh, I know he like to sit on the end, tell him to slide on in, so you're going to keep getting up and sitting down, so you can slide, unless he want to get up. Okay, because I told him Sunday I'm going to find something for him to do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Sister Diana. Last night, Okay. Uh Beyonce. Okay. So the next slide, Sister Angie. Oh, uh, Beyonce. So we talked about six ways that God addresses people um uh, in um with a supernatural messenger or an angel, people encounter. Now, 
Let's look at six ways God addresses people in the Bible through dreams and visions. Okay? Through dreams and visions. So, um, Sister Portia, if you can um, share the Genesis 37 passage. Uh, Beyonce, if you can share the Genesis 41 passage. Um, I want to share the Ananias passage. <laughs> um, and um, Jasmine, if you can share the Acts 10, 9 through 19 passage. Okay? Okay. You know, y'all know I like to like the Pentecostal church. Read. That's Beyonce. Wait, um, um, that's Beyonce back there, Sister Pam. So, you, you know, that's Beyonce. This is Jasmine, one of our new members. Okay? All right. Genesis 37. I mean, I'm sorry. Genesis 41, Beyonce, verses 1 through 7. As soon as Sister Portia finishes. All right. One night, Joseph his brother about it. They hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the fields tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you'll be, you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. All right. Beyonce came out to the bullpen, praise the Lord. All right. Living in Damascus was a believer named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling his name Ananias. Yes, Lord, Ananias answered. The Lord said, go at once to the street called Abundance and look for a man from Tarsus named Saul. You will find him at Judah's house. While he was praying, he saw in a supernatural vision a man named Ananias coming to lay hands upon him to restore his sight. But Lord, Ananias replied, many have told me about this, his terrible persecution of those in Jerusalem who are devoted to you. Okay? And we're going to make a right-hand turn to Acts 10. Um, the next day around noon, as, Corn as Cornelius men were approaching Joppa, Peter went up to the flat roof of the house to pray. He was hungry and wanted to eat, but while lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trance and entered into another realm. As the heavenly realm opened up, he saw something resembling a large linen tablecloth that descended from above, being let down to the earth by its four corners. As it floated down, he saw it held many kinds of four-footed animals, reptiles, and wild birds. And a voice said to him, Peter, go and prepare them to be eaten. Peter replied, there's no way I could do that, Lord, for I've never eaten anything forbidden or impure according to our Jewish laws. The voice spoke again, nothing is unclean if God declares it to be clean. The vision has the vision was repeated three times. Then suddenly the linen sheet was snatched back up into heaven. Peter was so stunned by the vision that he couldn't stop wondering about what it all meant. Meanwhile, Cornelius' men had learned where Peter was staying and that same moment were standing outside the gate. They called out of to the house and, and they called out to those in the house, is this where Simon the rock is staying? 
As Peter was in deep thought trying to interpret the vision, the spirit said to him, go downstairs now. Okay? For there are three men looking for you. Don't hesitate to go with them because I've sent them. I've sent them. All right. Um, next slide. So we've seen all these ways. Six ways audible people address God addresses people in an audible voice. Abraham, Samuel. Two important ways in which God speaks to us in conjunction with the language of human beings and through the inner voice of our own thoughts most suited to God's presence in our lives as a close personal friend. I shared, um, Reverend Maria and I was having a conversation today, uh, and I shared with her uh, that prophecy comes to confirm something the Lord has already spoken to you. And the prophet does not know you, or he or she may know you, but you've never shared what the Lord shared with you to them and so when that prophecy comes to you it's simply confirmation of what the Lord has already what said and that's why people are so in shock and all like wait a minute have you have you been reading my prayer journals or uh, have you been sitting in my room because all of the stuff you said the Lord has already told me and this comes as what confirmation of what the Lord said yes ma'am Candace I'm glad you asked that. Um, if we go to, and this is on my handout for the slide. If let's go to Acts chapter let's go to Acts chapter 19. Okay? Everybody, let's go to Acts chapter 19 okay um let me okay Acts chapter 19 uh, hopefully this answers your question, um, Susan Candace. Um, Acts chapter 19 tells a story of a band of believers who saw um, who saw Peter, um, I mean who saw Paul performing miracles and they thought they could do the same thing. But they were not, they thought it was witchcraft or, not, not witchcraft, they thought it was a magician. And the story goes on to say that, um, um, Acts 19, so I'm, I'm just giving like an overview of the whole chapter, Brother Glenn. So, um, so this band of believers comes, they see Paul um, move in miraculous and marvelous ways. They, in turn, think that they can do the same thing that Paul can do and find out that they tried to exercise demons from this, from this person who was possessed by a demon. They couldn't do it, and the demon jumped on them. And the demon says, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? And, and then, uh, so the evil spirit jumps on them. Uh, and, and one of the points I make is that believers, and then after uh, the evil spirit leaped on them and mastered them, it overpowered them, and they made them run out of the house naked and wounded. And one of the points I make in the handout is believers who've been using spells and practicing magic forsook such practices, realizing there was a great disparity between magic and and the kingdom of God. A fortune teller is not of God. So a fortune teller is, okay, we'll give you another passage. Um, Elijah 
is a man of God and he is facing all of these so-called prophets of Baal and he say alright we're going to have a contest to see whose God can do this alright we're going to put some wood and we're going to put some fire on the wood and see if the fire um, consumes the wood they couldn't do it they did all this dancing running around they couldn't do it uh, God uses Elijah to do it miracles happen Candace to encourage us in the Lord not and they also not only encourage us in the Lord but also to increase our faith um, magicians and sorcerers and fortune tellers their sole purpose is to get your money okay so having these seances and trying to get um, the dead to come and speak to you and all of these other things is not of God okay um, now um, and, and I really talk about this in, in the handout for, 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 for this week if we get to it but one of the things we have to be careful is um, we have to be careful in understanding prophecy um, and understand that everybody does not have the gift of prophecy um, and prophets have spent a lot of time with God to birth that prophecy um, Rev. Maria those who are here at church Sunday at 10 o'clock um, Rev. Maria is growing in her gift of prophecy and the, the, the word that she had for the house was confirmed by several people she had never I mean she had not had a conversation with before she had the word and it was the very word that they said they needed okay so a magician is going to try to sleight of a hand um, it's going to try to trick you gonna, but first of all before they even talk to you you got to pay okay so if there's some money transacting for me to this is a service then that's a problem number one number two they're trying to conjure up these things of why you're going through what you're going through now the enemy does have power but the enemy is not more powerful than our God okay did I, did I help anybody else got questions so it's Carla. Anybody else got questions? Okay. Let, let's go back to our slide, um, Beyonce. Okay. So let, let's let's move on to the next one. We're gonna finish this handout tonight. Six ways God addresses people in the Bible. Human voice. God speaking in union with the human voice and human language is the primary objective way in which God addresses us. When God does this, God often chooses weaker vessels. Both were weak with words so that they might have the best chance of clinging constantly to their support in God who spoke in union with them and so they might connect their hearers with God. Moses God, I've got a speech impediment. Can't you use my brother Aaron? Because God wants to lift, God wants his word and what we're saying be lifted up more than the person who is saying it. So that's why we can't get so caught up in God using flawed fickle people to do what he needs to get done is because it's a miracle that God uses flawed fickle people um, Paul says we have this treasure in earthen vessels um, so the the people of that day buried expensive treasures in vessels it wasn't so much the vessel was the treasure it was the thing that was inside the vessel 
That's why Paul says we have this what? Treasure in earthen vessels. You all been hearing me preach about Paul. Paul was Saul. He was the biggest, the biggest critic, the biggest persecutor of believers. But one day on the Damascus Road, God turned him around. And now Paul is lifted up as one who has written a significant amount of the New Testament all from humble beginnings because he was a Pharisee and he was not supposed to be the person that we lifted up. Am I making sense, y'all? Questions, comments? So Paul, so God uses weaker vessels to get his point across. God uses flawed people to say what he wants to be said. Questions? Questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. When you say weaker vessels, mm-hmm. do you mean just a regular person, you know, just a regular, ordinary person? I would dare say um, flawed people. So not just a regular, ordinary person, but a flawed, regular, or, well, okay, I can agree with you, Sister Pam, because all of us are flawed. Okay, but that's the beauty of God's word and how God operates because he uses those people he doesn't use the people um, who think they're all of that he uses the folks who've been who messed up who've done stupid stuff all of those people okay anybody else got questions okay let's go back to our slide so the still small voice Proverbs 20 and 27 and 1 Corinthians 2 9 through 13 and 15 through 16 but let, let's we must ask God to give us an openness to hear whatever the spirit wishes to bring us each day because as we grow in grace God's laws increasingly form the foundation of our hearts his love is our love his faith is our faith and our very awareness of our actions intentions and surroundings then bears into clarity into the clarity of his vision so which means that as we as we grow in grace we have this foundation that we love what he loves his faith becomes our faith so which means that our very awareness of our actions intentions and surroundings then hears into clarity into the clarity of his vision so we no longer see people the way we see them we see them the way God sees them am I making sense y'all questions so Carly you ain't been asking no questions tonight questions okay let's keep going we must ask God to give us an openness to hear whatever the spirit of wishes uh, same slide I'm sorry Okay, no, you're going the wrong way. No, you're going backwards. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. God comes to us precisely in and through our thoughts, perceptions, and experiences, and that he can approach our conscious life only through them, for they are the substance of our lives that means God is going to speak to us through our thoughts through how we see things through our experiences that's how he approaches us so God ain't just coming out of the woodworks so as we're driving our experiences God uses our experiences to what speak to us <sighs> um, I think um, Red Maria was um, I don't know if she said this somewhere oh we were in teaching a class last Saturday she was talking about spiritual discipline and she said this how we react shows areas of where we need to grow in grace so if we're in if we got road rage I'm not going to call no names but I think they're sitting in the back because I've been on the phone with them talking church business and to the angel and they got road rage. 
that's area that we need to what? Grow in what? Grace. If the little smallest thing sends us off the deep end, to the angel, that's the way we need to what? Grow in what? Grace. If we always trying to do stuff for folks, that's the way we need to what? If we always angry and upset, we're not going to call no names. Beyonce, that's what we need to what? Grow in grace. Sister Candace, yes, ma'am. No, you can answer as many questions as you want. That's why we're here. What is the difference between having spiritual disciplines and a spiritual ear? What, well, spiritual disciplines are things that we use to draw us closer to God. So, spiritual disciplines, prayer, fasting, meditation, uh, simplicity, solitude, giving, worship, those are spiritual disciplines. Spiritual ear is more a spiritual gift or what some people would call the gift of discernment. Okay? And now, Gifts are things we can pray for. And all of us should be praying that we have the gift of what? Discernment. Because when we have the gift of discernment, then we won't go for the what? Okie doke. Even if they nice and they kind. Okay? Because... Before we do things, we're being we're praying and are we led by God to do this? Because just because it's a good thing and it's a nice thing and it's a kind thing and it's a generous thing does not mean that we need to what? Do it. Questions. Questions. We can pray for gifts. That is not, we can pray for gifts. That does not mean that God's going to give us the gifts we pray for, but we can pray for gifts. Um, disciplines are things that we should be operating in. And disciplines helped to grow us in grace and help us, help bring us closer to God. So prayer helps to bring us what? closer to God meditation helps bring us close to God solitude going away by ourselves just hearing from God helps to bring us what closer to God worship helps to bring us closer to God giving serving um, celebration that we got to be able to celebrate when God is doing in other person's lives or even in our own life in our own life um, simplicity the, the spiritual discipline of simplicity I keep saying this and some of y'all have known me say this for 10 years most of us are hoarders we got stuff that we don't need and you're saying it's hard to get rid of it brother Glenn but could people the stuff you have people be, could be blessed by the stuff you hoard you thinking I'm gonna I'm I'm need this one day when that one day gonna come So spiritual gifts, Sister Carla, there is a gift, um, a spiritual gift of discernment, but all of us should be praying for, we may not have the gift of discernment, that gift is for people who operate in that high levels, but all of us should be praying for discernment, that we won't fall for the what? Okie doke. So all of us should be praying for discernment. So um, like so, Sister Pam, um, one of the gifts, and I believe this is one of my gifts, is the gift of giving. That means I go way above and beyond what's required, what's expected, what's asked. Okay? Everybody's not going to operate at that level, but everybody should give. Okay? Um, so Carla has a gift of intercessory prayer. Everybody should pray, but certain folks 
can tarry for the Lord. She and Sister Angie can, who are here in the house, can tarry for the Lord. Okay? There are other people who have the gift of prophecy or the gift of interpretation of prophecy or the gift of teaching or the gift of healing. Okay? Pastor Portia would tell you her dominant gift is healing. Her dominant gift is not prophecy. So Pam, you got your hand up. Let me go back to what you said about those nice things. Uh-huh. So you shouldn't do nice things. I, 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 what I'm saying is everything we do, we should be led in the spirit in doing it. Everything. Everything. And we should, but part of this hearing from God, Sister Pam, is we should be so connected to God that when an opportunity comes that we know this is the Lord leading me. So, uh, so Sister Pam, I'm not saying that every time something happens that you need to get a burning bush or you need to get a part of the Red Sea. God doesn't operate that way but what this Bible study is trying to help us to see is that we've got to become so connected to God and that we have a such a firm foundation that we know the promptings of the Holy Spirit when to do things and when not to do things even if it's a good thing Sister Angie okay because everything is a good thing is not necessarily a God thing uh, one of the things that uh, um, a couple of years ago I took some members of the church to Atlanta and one of the places we went to is a church called Buckhead Church. Buckhead Church is church pastored by Andy Stanley, who is Charles Stanley's son. Now, Andy Stanley pastors probably one of the biggest churches in the country, four locations all over Atlanta. Andy Stanley's church prides itself on we're not going to do everything. We're only going to do these things. We're going to do youth and children ministry extremely well. We're going to do small groups. We're not having open Bible study like we got now. It's small groups. We're going to do small groups. We're going to do, um, we're going to do youth and children ministry well. So they're not going to have, Sister Pam, a sports team for all of their members to be a part of because that defeats their purpose because their purpose is they want to be an evangelizing and witnessing and they want to be in what they call community evangelism where they want your child to be playing on uh, Pookie Ray Ray uh, Optimus team and then they want you to be inviting those persons to come to what? The church because for them it defeats the purpose of all the believers if, all, if, if light dispels darkness and if all the light is always together then how can light dispel darkness and so one of the things that as we continue to grow and develop that there are some things that I think are good ideas but it ain't necessarily what we need to be doing that we're going to be focused on these things and these things only because we are called to do those things. Okay? Um, so somebody can come and say, Pastor, I think we should do that. And I, I got to pray. Does it line up with our vision? Can we do it? Are we led to do it? If we're not, it may be a great thing. It may be a wonderful thing. But we just need to pray that the Lord open up the heart of another pastor and some other congregations for them to do it. And support them in what? Doing it. Every church does not need to do the same things. Does that make sense? Other questions? Questions? Does the answer, you don't have any questions tonight. What's going on? Okay. Let's go back to slides. Okay. God's gracious intrusions into our souls. Bless you. God's gracious intrusions into our souls can make our thoughts his thoughts. God will help us learn.
to distinguish Sister Pam when I when I thought it's ours alone and when it's also his. Okay, um Romans twelve two be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, uh, so that you'll know what is good, what is perfect, what is acceptable, what is pleasing to God. That's Romans 12, 2. Okay? But that means you and God got to be on the what? Same page, so you can know. Okay? Questions? This is a caller. What's your question? No. No. Because God wants to be so connected to you that you know which way God will want you to go. Would God want you to spend 40 years on something you could have spent three week, three days? So God wants you to be so connected to him, Sister Carla, that you know somebody comes to you with something. Sister Pam, you know this is beyond your scope, but you got the gift of giving, and so what? You give. This is beyond your scope, but you know this came from what? God. Okay? Um, you were prompted by the Holy Spirit. They came to you in the right manner. They, you, you, you know they. this is a person who you would not necessarily come in your space. This isn't the person that would not necessarily you connect with. Um, but you know this person. We've all had those kind of encounters when people, we know God divinely orchestrated them to come. Okay? That makes sense, y'all? Other questions? Did I help, Sister Carla? Keep pushing. Or should our prayer be, Lord, lead me to where you want me to do? I want to be so connected to you. So today, um, it, it, some days, some people just wake up like I, I, I'm really feeling led to bless somebody. So the prayer should be, Lord, lead me to the person who I'm supposed to bless. You, you. I woke up with this prompting from the Holy Spirit. I'm supposed to bless somebody today. Who is this person? Um, I, I, I never forget. I'm gonna use this portion. Um, 
when we first started IT, y'all, you know, Red Maria and I, financially, we were struggling. We didn't know, um, you know, um, how we was going to make it. So Sister Portia would be old school Sister Singleton. And you old school, you know how folks put a 50 or or $100 bill and fold it four times? And she would just roll up on Rev. Maria. And you know how old folks, and Sister Portia ain't that old, uh, Sister Portia my age, and put that, ha- put that in your hand and hold it and make sure you got it. Y'all know that? Ain't that a good feeling? So several times Sister Portia did that as we were starting IT. I mean, just... Brad Maria, I want to be a blessing to you. Boom, boom, boom. <sighs> Almost a year later, Sister Porsche lost her job. Um, and I felt led by the Holy Spirit to give my we had we had been a year into the church. I had led by, been led by the Holy Spirit to give her. Reverend Maria and I both of our weekly salary to be a blessing to her okay now God knows our financial situation had not changed that much Um, but Reverend Maria has been listening to William McDowell and I quoted this on Sunday he's got a song and says I'm not afraid of the rain because I got a seed in the ground and the seed can't grow unless some what rain comes now a lot of folks want to have a harvest but ain't planting no seeds am I making sense y'all and so we've got to be led to plant and understanding that planning always does not come back in form of money I think I, I was going to go there sister, um, sister um, because there was an extended period of time that Reverend Maria and I did not have health insurance and we never got sick okay um And so you don't know how your harvest is going to come back. But you just got to be willing to what? Plant seeds. Okay? Other questions? We're going to get through this lesson tonight, and then we're going to be ready for this next week. Um, let, let's go back to our slides. Um, in the process of struggling, we grow to the point where we can appropriate and assimilate the content of truth as it becomes clear. Let's go to Mark 10. Somebody read it for me. <laughs> All right. They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup? that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Okay. And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. Okay. Next slide. Bob Mumford says, signs are given to us because God meets us on the level where we operate. In guidance, when God shows us a sign, it doesn't mean we receive the final answer. A sign means we're on the way. On the highway, we may pass a sign saying New York, 100 miles. A sign doesn't mean we reach New York, but it tells us we're on the way. 
right road. Next slide. That it? That's it? Okay. On the other hand, Bob Munford goes on to say, God wants us to bring us beyond the point where we need signs to discern his guiding hand. Satan cannot counterfeit the peace of God or the love of God dwelling in us. When Christ's abiding presence becomes our guide, then guidance becomes an almost unconscious response to the gentle moving of his Holy Spirit within us. We must get beyond the need to have big things happening to reassure us that somehow we are all right and possible that others are not. God's whole purpose in our relationship with him is to bring us to the point where we can walk, where he can walk with us quietly, calmly, and constantly, leaving us space to grow to be his often fumbling co-laborers. I'm going to come back to this. We will still have some distance from him, yet be united with him because we are conformed to the image of his son bearing the family resemblance. And let's go back to this. God's whole purpose in our relationship with him is to bring us to the point where he can walk with us quietly, calmly, and constantly, leaving us space to grow to be his often fumbling co-laborers. God is not looking for robots. God knows that we are flawed people and God gives us space to mess up. But he still loves us and he's still walking what? Right there what? Beside us. Does that make sense? Questions. What's wrong, Brother Glenn? You're struggling. That's what we do. Sister Carla. questions comments Beyonce can we go to the next slide God wants us to bring us wants to bring us into communion with him a union sometime beyond communication a life constantly before him in this world and the next that is simply a silent that speaks God speaks in silence yes ma'am Beyonce I, yeah, I know this is the last slide Francis Havergal says in his silent in love, love culminates in a bliss when it doth reach a white unflickering fear consuming glow and knowing it is known as it doth know, needs no assuring word or soothing speech. It craves but silent nearness. So the rest, no sound, no movement, love not heard but felt longer and longer still till time should melt a snowflake on the eternal ocean's breast having have moments of this silence starred by the past starred thy past made memory a glowing haunted place taught all the joy the mortal kin can trace by greater light tis but a shadow cast so shall the lord thy god rejoice over thee and in his love will rest and silent be I want y'all to remember, look at the line. It craves but silent nearness, so to rest. God speaks to us in silence. It's not going to always be a burning bush. It's not always going to be um, a parting of the Red Sea. It's not always going to be walls tumbling down. God speaks to us in silence.
Questions, comments? Sister Pam. When you say silence, you mean when we're silent, like when we're quiet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think, Sister Pam, I started a Bible study off a couple of weeks ago about the small, still voice. If you're looking for God to sound like James Earl Jones, you're going to miss it. God does not always bombard us with the bass booming voice of this is God and Pam you're supposed to do this God doesn't operate that way it's a still small voice it could be riding to, the, to work it could be coming home from work it could be even stuck in traffic it could be in the midst of a hectic day where everything that could go wrong does go wrong and God calms you and says it's going to be alright okay okay other questions comments okay so you have the handout now for next week so you got time to read over it we're going to go over this we're still in our series on hearing from God. Um, and uh, some of the questions that you asked, uh, we're going to expound that some more, Candace, next week. Okay? Other questions? Uh, let me thank those who are watching online. Again, uh, if you go to our app, the Emmanuel Temple Sermon Notes are there, Bible st in, in the app, Sermon Notes and Bible Study Notes. So this handout as well as the handout for next Tuesday is there. Uh, let me also encourage you, if, would you pray and be led by the Spirit to sow into this ministry? Uh, we are trying to purchase 120 laptop computers for children who are graduating from high school, who are homeless, who are registered with the HEART program, and they're all going off to college. And persons have already sold. You can go click the online giving and click... Um, the computer for the homeless kids. I've asked. I'm asking members to call a friend. Everybody knows a friend who can uh, give two hundred dollars. Uh, Cause some of folks will blow that in a weekend uh, or just one night at the club. Somebody ought to say, "Man, or out to dinner." And so uh, we're looking for those. Some of you have already asked persons, and we're grateful. We're not asking members to do this. Um, because our church, when you give your tithes and offering, it's going to help us do this. But we're asking other persons to partner with us in doing this. Um, the Bible says one can chase a thousand, two can chase what? Ten thousand. All right? Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to share. Uh, we thank you for uh, your still small voice that speaks to us. Uh, continue to work on us and work with us and work through us that we may be the people of God that you've called us to be. Continue to use us, God. Bless our efforts uh, to make a difference in the lives of others, to be your hands and your feet in this uh, your world. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everybody online. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Beyonce, Sister Angie, for uh, serving in our media ministry. <laughs>